Hello, and welcome to Squabble, a noisy quarrel about something petty or trivial. I'm Carter. And I'm Jacob. And um, today, um, today, today is, first of all, a special let's day. take a, you know, I'm going to sound a little sad because this is a, the last episode of oh, season three. So disappointing. Very. Um, but, we need a break. But look, <laughs> look, look to the future, okay? Yes. Season four is coming. It's going to be better what? and bigger and uh, spicier and, and, and it's going to be good. Uh, here, here's a few things we're doing for season four. Oh, boy. Here Number one, okay, we, we're going to be here. Okay, that's pretty special. <laughs> yeah, it's very special. That's <clears throat> the most special part of, I would say, this whole podcast. Number two, Number two? they're going to be here. You are yeah. going to be here. <laughs> that's the second most special part. That is the second most special part. We're a little bit more important. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, duh. It, it would you know you wouldn't even have the show without us. So yeah, like we are exactly. by definition. Like it's just fact. We're a little bit more important. <clears throat> well, I don't know. Okay, let's just t- take us out of the equation. It would just be forty minutes of silence and a wall. <laughs> and they, if they still watch, well, no, we could still produce it. Therefore, they're more important. No, because we we wouldn't even be here to set up the camera or the True. microphones. Okay, yeah, you're right. You know, no offense, but we are a little, a little bit more important. important. I yeah. mean, we. We made this expecting no one to even watch or listen. <laughs> so, so there you go. True. But you know what? We still value you. That's all. just the facts, okay? Uh, but uh, if if fact. I was like ditching the facts, if I was just trying to be a nice guy, I'd be like, yeah, you're way more important. So important. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Also, yes. just some, anyway. Yikes. Um, thanks for listening. You know what? I'm that. That was a bad start to an episode. <laughs> that was supposed to be, you know, special. Yeah. Sentimental. Very. Um, but it's like, congrats on three seasons. So. Yeah, you too. Congrats yeah, on three you. seasons. Yeah, well. Congrats on you guys for, for three, seasons. three seasons. Especially if you've been here since the beginning. Because we wouldn't have been as committed if, you know, people didn't like it. True. So. You guys keep us moving forward. Because every once in a while, I'm like, yeah, do we really need to release an episode this week? And then I'm like, yeah, I can't let, let, people can't down. let uh, our people down. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, something that's going to happen for season four, okay? One this light behind us. I was talking to Jake about this. The one on a pole? Yeah, the one on this pole. I'm going to hang it from the ceiling. So you can't see the pole. I thought that'd just be. You know, I like that. Put a little yeah. effort into that because these, yeah. these were new lights, and you know we just kind of set it up. We're like, it's good. Um, two. Uh, I'm not gonna actually say what this is. I'm gonna give a little hint, okay? Uh-oh. Because it rhymed and I thought it was funny. Uh-huh. Uh, season four door. That's the hint. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you it wasn't very rhythmic. I guess it does rhyme, but <laughs> four and door. Okay. Yeah. Season. Uh, how about this? A special door for season four. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. So you can decide what you think that means. Um, two, uh, t- three. I mean. Yes. Um, I, I I don't have anything else. To okay. But there is going to be special stuff. Yeah. You know? It'll be different. It'll be sp- spicy. Yeah. But today we celebrate one other thing, not just sadness. But we celebrate. <laughs> Are we Halloween. celebrating sadness? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, Halloween, guys. It, it's Halloweeny time. Get your Halloweenies out and <laughs> get get to town. Whip out your Halloweenies and get that candy. Yes. Get those um, sweet sweets so for your Halloweenies. Something that something that is first of all, <laughs> Halloween's supposed to be. You know, we're all supposed to. It's supposed to be magical. It's supposed to be magical. It's a friendly time where everyone just fr- freaking hands out candy you and know? dresses up like be, people that want to kill you. Why are you arguing on Halloween? Okay. Yeah, but, um, but there is something that needs to be settled. <laughs> yes, um, a popular movie around the a movie uh, I really a, like a holiday movie. I'll say that for now. A general term mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is is the Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, an, a classic, uh, age old movie. Yeah. Um, well, since nineteen ninety three, <laughs> um, a movie I've loved. One of my favorite movies first of all small, time. I did not think this movie <clears throat> was that old. Yeah. This movie has aged very well. It I has think. aged amazingly. It's like a fine wine. Or me. <laughs> it's better every time I watch it. Exactly. Well, and I will go ahead and say, the, anyways, the debate is, is it a Christmas movie or is it a Halloween movie? Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm not going to hedge or anything, but I'm going to say the beauty of it is I get to watch it twice. I watch it before Halloween, and then I also watch it yeah, before Christmas. A, like, the genius of of... Whoever decided that to put this into a movie, this was a good idea. Uh, mm-hmm. Because, you know, when you make a Halloween movie, you watch it once a year. You make a Christmas movie, you usually watch it once a year. Yeah. You make a Halloween slash Christmas movie, yeah. that's at least twice a year. Yes. <laughs> True. And I, I will go ahead and say this. I think you can agree with this. 
I think we both think that, yes, it is both, but we're going to be arguing as if it had to be put into a category, which one it is more of, right? I think you can um, agree yes, with that. Yes, I would definitely agree that it is at least a little bit both yes. Christmas and Halloween But it is more, it is more of a Christmas movie. Uh, it, it is more of a Halloween movie. No, so it that's is, our side. I am taking Christmas. I think I'm taking a Christmas Halloween. Movie. Before we uh, continue, I want to okay. do another little announcement. Things are still happening in between season three and season four oh, yeah. on Instagram, and we're going to be releasing some. I plan to anyway release some specials, some special videos, and yeah, keep so, on the Instagram. There's some vlogs, maybe so some little kind of. That's all I got. Many things, yeah, yeah. So don't don't discredit us. Okay, we're still here. True, but. Right now, <laughs> you said but. You want you said but <laughs> earlier too. You said would but you again. would you want me to start? <laughs> <laughs> sure, go Your ahead. Stupid start. butt jokes. Okay, um, Night Before Christmas is obviously a Christmas movie for one reason. Or let me just do you 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 think of a movie by <laughs> its plot and by the the what happens in it, the important parts of the movie. Okay, let me say a Night Before Christmas. Yes, it is sure Halloween characters in Halloween land, but the importance of it in the entire, everything that happens in the movie is about Christmas. Christmas drives mm. the plot. Christmas, well, I guess, yeah, Christmas drives the plot. Christmas is um, the goal. Christmas is the conflict. It's all about Christmas. Everything that happens in the movie happens because of Christmas. Um, and I think that's the biggest part of making a movie and what you would say classify a movie as is what happens in it. Um, I would, I would, I would disagree. Mm -hmm. I would say what, when you put a movie into a category, um, or when you're trying to say, what's the movie about, Mm -hmm. you're speaking, you're talking about the message. What is the movie about? What's the movie, um, like saying, what is the, like, if what would you say to describe the movie and how I would describe this movie is these characters are, are trying to accept that their own holiday. In the, in the end of the movie, there it's the message is that they need to learn to accept their holiday, even though True. you know that there's these other holidays that are that but they also like. Would they have ever come to that realization without encountering Christmas? No, Christmas. But the was realization important. is about their own holiday. Okay, is that okay. Their holiday. Is Let me give you some some other they reasons. Need to some more who they more are. trivial reasons why it's a Christmas movie, but still important. Um, the word Christmas is in the title. I'll just go ahead and say it. it's Christmas. Okay, you do get you do got me there because yeah. it's not called um, you know there's Halloween no holiday and Christmas. Called yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the movie takes place. This is important from November first to December twenty fifth to Christmas Day. It never it's never around Halloween. It's never it's past Halloween. They're done with the <laughs> Halloween season when they start. And sure, because it's Halloween town, they start preparing for Halloween early. But they do. I mean, yeah, that's what the okay. movie. The movie starts with the day after Halloween, and then it starts on Christmas. Okay, but let me tell you this. Maybe it starts on the day of Halloween. I think it starts on the night of Halloween, but regardless. Okay, well, first of all, there you go. It starts on the night well, of Halloween. Well, actually, my, I think it's the next day. My, but, my rebuttal is that the movie itself was released in October. Um, <laughs> yes. This is a October. Whenever you make a Christmas movie, you release it. November. <laughs> during or near Christmas. Okay, October is near Christmas. Some people Christmas are already Christmas. putting up Christmas trees and singing Christmas songs. Those people are wild. <laughs> yeah. Mad lads. Okay, would you like to hear one other, and this is actually a pretty important one, or this is like a pretty, not like a big deal, but there are way more songs about Christmas in this musical, it is a musical, than there are about Halloween. Let me list, the, the, these are the songs about Christmas in it. Hmm. What's this? He discovers Christmas. Yeah, yeah. The town meeting song, he tells all of the people about Christmas. Jack's Obsession, it's about him trying to recreate Christmas. Kidnap the Santa Claus, it's about them going to find Santa Claus. For Christmas, because they need him to, <laughs> yeah, they need to talk to him about Christmas. Making Christmas, also about them recreating Christmas. Um, I said Christmas way too many times in that sentence. It's yeah, starting really, to sound like really a word. Drilling that as the and then head. for Halloween song, songs that are about Halloween, I'll give one one song, and then I have two other ones that I'm gr- being gracious with. The first one, this is Halloween. Obviously, yes, I'll give that to one everybody. That's all about Halloween. But the other two I gave graciously. This is me being gracious. The Oogie Boogie song, which isn't really has nothing to do with Halloween. In fact, they even banish they him from Halloween town. Well, it's because he's so evil, dude. They yeah, literally but that has nothing Santa. to do with the, the holiday or the season of Halloween. Um, secondly, but I'll give it to you, Stretch. And then the third one, <laughs> Poor Jack, which is his, his lament about how he failed at uh, Christmas, which means he can be good at Halloween. So I'll give you that much. You get, you get this is Halloween, and then you kind of get 
kind of get the Oogie Boogie song and kind of get Poor Jack, which is his, his like lament, his his uh, ballad about how he should accept himself as Halloween. So it's not it's just as much about Christmas. It's about his failures in Christmas and how he can still be the Pumpkin King. So it's equally both. Okay, let me tell you this. First of all, um, okay. First of all, <laughs> I'm trying to decide whether I should uh, whip out my the big guns because <laughs> I do have a pretty destructive argument. Yeah, However, I know what it is. Yeah, bet. <laughs> you, no, I don't want to. I don't want to whip it out now. Okay, I I go for it. If you want, I'll argue it all day. Well, I, I can't. Now that I've said that, I can't remember what I was going to say originally. So <laughs> um, maybe I will whip it out. <clears throat> Let me just read you a little something, something. Okay. Uh, the director uh, Henry Selick, Selick, who went on to direct James and the Giant Peach and Coraline. First of all, both Good creepy movies. movies. This guy just makes. Movies weird movies for Halloween, okay? Well, okay. Well, James of the Giant Peach and Coraline are not Halloween. Maybe Coraline, but not James of the Giant Peach. Uh, it it has that creepy vibe. Yeah, but it's nothing to do with Halloween. Okay, yeah, I, I guess maybe you're Coraline, right, but like, Coraline's kind of creepy, but yeah. not James of the Giant Peach. Oh, I remember my other point. Okay, um, <laughs> this was based off a of Tim Burton it was. book, mm-hmm. and Tim Burton Which was just it was born for Halloween. Literally, his soul is just darkness it's ha- he's just a halloween person okay everything he does can be could could be argued that it's based on halloween <laughs> okay yeah um but the argument that i have here is uh um Selick, uh participated in a q a back in 2015 where he mm-hmm. was asked by a little girl in the audience to settle it once and for all she asked him is the nightmare before christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. Selleck says, oh boy, it's a Halloween movie, <laughs> period. <laughs> That's it. Okay, sure. I'll. He said that. The director went on to explain that although the story of The Nightmare Before Christmas involves quite a bit about Christmas and that he's consistently told people the that people, Wait, he's. Cons- I can't read it. They love Santa. Uh, that they lo- Yeah, the core of the film is devoted to a love of Halloween and all of the spooky inhabitants of Halloween Town. Um, you can read the next part. Despite Selleck's response, the debate is still alive and well. On just Twitter. because, just because the debate's still I will alive say, doesn't mean there's. A, yes, that's a, a great answer. a great point and a big big plus for your argument. But might I say? You might. When it comes, okay. <laughs> when it comes to something like this, to something about what holiday should be celebrated, because like even look like on Wikipedia or whatever this is, it doesn't say uh, under genre Christmas movie or well, the genre is fantasy, fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. So, I a. I would say that it's about the viewer and what the viewer thinks for something like a movie, for something like art. It's about the viewer, and I think. You know, it's not like a ma- it's not like a math problem where like yes, this is the answer. Sure, that's how he sees it, but this is art, brother. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and the beholder says it's a Christmas movie. May not I to also, mention, okay, yeah. this is actually a pretty big point too. Sure, you can look at the roots of Night Before Christmas, the movie, the director, what he said, but you could go even further into the roots, into its original, even more original raw form, which was the poem, which was literally. A par- not like a parody, but it was literally like a, uh, a not like a retelling. It was kind of like a parody. It was like a spoof almost of the, the Night Before Christmas, which is so obviously a Christmas. So like, it's called The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a play on the words The Night Before Christmas, which is the most Christmas thing ever. And so its roots is Christmas. It's based off of Christmas. It's Christmas with a spooky twist, not <laughs> Halloween with a Christmas twist. And I will argue that to the day I die. Okay, well, let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. Uh, The whole movie, the whole movie has a has it as a negative play on Christmas and a positive play Mm. on no on how yes, dude. The whole the entire movie, uh, Jack, the uh, the main character, (coughs) is obsessed with Christmas, but everything he tries to do fails. Everything about Christmas just ends up being a complete disaster until he embraces Halloween and every time he tries to do something for Halloween turns out great for him. Everything is great, but every time he tries to do something about Christmas, it flops, okay? The whole movie is looking down on Christmas and just bashing Christmas um, and being like, Halloween's no, better. It is not bashing Christmas. You missed the whole point of the movie, brother. The whole point of the movie is to accept both and that they're both good for what they are and Jack Skellington, he didn't feel 
he didn't feel at himself anymore. You know, the things that once brought him, like the things that he was passionate about and brought him so much fun and pleasure, you know, he felt like he had done it all with Halloween. He was like, I'm done with Halloween. I've done it all. And so then he moves to Christmas and he sees this wonderful new world and he tries to do that and he realizes that my roots, you know, this is like, is in Halloween. My, my, this is what I'm made for. You know, this my, that's my thing. And that's the whole point is that you can do both. It's not saying, it's not looking down on anything. It's just the whole point is that they're both great, but he was made for Halloween. Hmm. He was following his destiny. But it doesn't say anything bad about Christmas. It just says it's not for him. In fact, they're the bad guys for ruining Christmas when they go to Earth and they like try to shoot him down. Not Earth. I guess they're still on. Where are they? That's a good point. <laughs> Whenever they go to, to the <laughs> human world, they're, they're, they're like shot down and they're like the bad guys. And even Jack recognizes that he's done a bad thing. He's not like, yes, I destroyed Christmas. I'm a good guy. He's like, oh, I can't believe I've ruined it for everybody when I was just trying to do good. So um, he recognizes Christmas is a good thing. He just recognizes that it's not him. Uh, that is that is true. That is kind of the point of the movie, I guess. But I don't think he necessarily recognizes that. I guess he does recognize that it's not for him. But mm-hmm. I think the point was that he needs to embrace what he's good at and embrace what he's made for, which is Halloween Town. Yes. The so movie is set in Halloween Town, okay? But... It wouldn't even have existed. Him discovering, and it's from Jack Skellington's point of view, which I think mm-hmm. is very important. It's from a Halloween town point of view, mm-hmm. not a Christmas. Not, it's not San, it's not Santa's point of view. Main character is a literal skeleton. Just because the movie is from someone's point of Halloween. view doesn't mean that it's necessarily about that inherently, or it falls under that genre. Another important dis- a thing to say is when I watch The Night Before Christmas, I get excited for both Christmas and Halloween. That is the, that's the yeah. point. That's, that's why you watch holiday movies, to get you into the, the spirit. Exactly. But I would say it makes me more excited for Christmas. Uh, Not to mention, how many? there's millions of Christmas movies. Millions of them. And this is one of the best ones out there. I would say that this is like arguably in the top like 10 or 5 of, of Christmas movies ever. Okay, first of all, before I even make my second point, I would like to uh, go back to the previous point where you said, the songs, there's not a lot of you mm-hmm. know, Halloween songs. Yeah. Boy, there are way more. First no, of all, I'm looking at, I was just looking at them. Remember the third song in the whole thing, which is, I would argue, the most iconic song in this whole okay. I'll movie give you that. is This Is Halloween. Yeah, so that's one. This is Halloween. This yeah, that's this one. Halloween. Da, da, da. Uh, Dr. Finkelstein. That's just his, bro, that's just his, like, uh, like theme, bro. That's not like a musical number. It's still <laughs> called Doctor Finkelstein. <laughs> that's just like the character you idiot. Okay. <laughs> town meeting song. Yeah, that's about Christmas. That's when he gets there and he shows them all the stuff he discovered in Christmas Town. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's when he. What's loading? I'm pretty sure. I guarantee it. We can play it if you need to. Now we might get uh, copyright struck. <laughs> and Jack's Lament, I'll go through every song with you. This is Halloween. Yes, that one's a Halloween one. Jack's Lament is about is the song he sings about how he's tired of Halloween. You need something new. So I'll, maybe that one's a Halloween song, but it's, that one's looking down on Halloween. What's this? He goes to Christmas Town. Town meeting song. He shows everybody what he learned at Christmas Town. Uh, that's just background music. Jack's Obsession. It's when they're all like, "What's he doing in there?" And he's working on Christmas stuff. <laughs> Kidnap the Santa Claus. They're going to get Christmas stuff. <laughs> um, Santa, Santa Claus um, Making Christmas Well it's got Christmas in the title right there mm-hmm. um, Oogie Boogie song maybe Sally's song is just about her and Jack It's not even about any, either of the holidays um, Poor Jack Okay I, I'll, so, I'll, I'll give you, you that I'll give you that But I still think a, a crucial argument Is that the director said It's a Halloween movie And although I hate playing the um, A lot of the time Well I don't hate hate it necessarily But a lot of the time it's it sucks to play the fact card, okay? But fact, man, the, if the director said it, it's it's gotta be it's gotta be true. And then I think my second heaviest point is that on the team of the the writer team was Tim Burton, which <laughs> he, just because he's a creepy dude doesn't make him. No, make that's it. his style of movies is mm. is creepy, creepy. movies. And and scary. That should but just, what's the poem? How long is it? I'll read it. It's not too long. Oh, dude, that's kind of long. No, it's not. Well, it's like a children's book. It's less of a poem. You yeah. want to read it? <laughs> uh, just start. Go a little bit. Yeah, give it a little bit. I want to know if okay. it's 
more halloween -er. It was late one fall in Halloween land, and the air had quite a chill. Against the moon, a skeleton sat, alone upon a hill. He was tall and thin with a bat bow tie. Jack Skellington was his name. He was tired and bored in Halloween land. I'm sick of the scaring, the terror, the fright. I'm tired of being something that goes bump in the night. I'm bored with leering my horrible glances, and my feet hurt from dancing those skeleton dances. Cue spooky, scary skeletons. Oh, well, he did not dance in, in the musical. Yeah, he kind of does. No, he does not. I, I guess. I want a dance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like graveyards, and I need something new. There must be more to life than just yelling boo. <gasps> oh, he's scared. Yeah, no. <laughs> then out from a grave with a curl and a twist came a whimpering, whining, spectral, spectral mist. It was a little ghost dog with a faint little bark and, jack -o and a jack-o'-lantern nose that glowed in the dark. It was Jack's dog Zero, the best friend he had, but Jack hardly noticed, which made Zero sad. All that night and through the next day, Jack wandered and walked. He was filled with dismay. Then deep in the forest, just before night, Jack came upon an amazing sight. Not twenty feet from the spot where he stood were three massive doorways carved in wood. He stood before them, completely in awe, his gaze transfixed by one special door. Uh, Didn't gosh. rhyme. No, not at all. That was <laughs> entranced and excited with a slight sense of worry. Jack opened the door to a white, windy flurry. Jack didn't know it, but he'd fallen down in the middle of a place called Christmas Town. Immersed in the light, Jack was no longer haunted. He had finally found the feeling he wanted. And so that his friends wouldn't think him a liar, he took the present filled stockings that hung by the fire. He took candy and toys that were stacked on the shelves and a picture of Santa with all of his elves. He took lights and ornaments and the star from the tree and the from Christmas Town sign, he took the big letter C. You know, this is the <laughs> most. Um, this movie is the most accurate to the book I've ever seen. True, in my life. yes, like every little thing that happens happens. In You're the, just basically reading the plot, but in exactly. very creative. Well, like way. the script, yeah, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so props, props to yeah. to um, the the I don't know writers and everybody else who was the director as well. I wonder if Oogie Boogie's in the this. I doubt he is. Yeah, do a little scrolling. How accurate it really is it? You know what would be cool? If hmm. we um, released a... Uh, of us reading it by a exactly. fire. Exactly. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Um, be a lookout for that. That'll be... <laughs> Probably closer to Christmas, though, right? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> we'll do it in... Yeah, there's no right answer. Mid-November. Mid <laughs> but that's still past... That still would make it more Christmassy. Okay. Well, how about, how about this? We release you reading it. Uh, at Christmas and I'll read <laughs> okay, <I'll> <laughs> yes that's great you guys that works did. out well and uh, you guys can say whose was better we do you have to have like a really like Jack poured himself up on a large stone cross Jack poured himself up on a log stone not a log <laughs> a large stone cross <laughs> and from there he reviewed his incredible loss I sound like Morgan Freeman a little bit I thought Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. I thought I could be Santa. <laughs> I, I can't thought, do Morgan Freeman. I you can. I, I can just do Kronk. We just. We already decided that. In I that. am God. <laughs> <laughs> That's blasphemous, bro. Morgan Freeman says it all, all the time. <laughs> he says it all the time. <laughs> he does. Well, you're not Morgan Freeman. You know, Morgan Freeman should have been in this movie. Morgan Freeman should have been in this. movie. He could have voiced Jack or narrated it. You're very, very right. Um, but anyways, back to this original point of this all. <laughs> I will give you the. I'm not going to say you win because I, I think I'm the winner still. But I will give you that fact-wise, okay, if, we, if this is just fact and we're like, this is the, we need a right answer, I guess I'll give you that the right answer is that it's a Halloween movie. But sometimes the right answer isn't the right answer, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <clears throat> you know uh, what I'm saying? I don't know what you're saying. <clears throat> well, it's like sometimes... The right answer just doesn't seem right. Even if it's correct factually, it's not right, you know? And so I think it's time we overthrow Henry Selleck <clears throat> and we change his mind. <laughs> you can't change the director's <laughs> mind after he's created it. Bet. You would have to go back and, and change the movie. We need Tim Burton. If Tim Burton said it was a Christmas movie, because I bet he would say it's Christmassy. It's more Christmassy. Because he wrote the original poem, which is a lot more Christmassy than Halloween-y. Uh, okay, look, the <coughs> fact that he, and you said this yourself, that the poem is a twist on a night before Christmas, what's the twist? A Halloween version of it. Yeah. A Halloween version of a night before Christmas. Yeah, but it's not a Christmas version of a Halloween thing. I think the, the making it, you have to look at what it originally is. A Halloween <laughs> version of a night No, it originally <laughs> is a Christmas thing with a Halloween twist. It's I not. disagree. I think it's it. He he is making the original Christmas poem a Halloween poem. I think the the 
I think key, I think the thought process behind it or, or the point of it is, this is a really you know, famous poem that is read on Christmas, or this is a famous Christmas mm-hmm. poem. Yeah. Let's make this a famous Halloween poem. I think, mm-hmm. I, I think is the, I don't know. I think once you take something that's Chris, that's anything and put a twist on it, I think whatever you put the twist, uh, whatever the twist is, is what it becomes. You know, like, I don't know. I think it depends on the case. Because I think, like, The Night Before Christmas, like the original poem, it's like the book, like the kid's book, is totally something that you gather around on, like, Christmas time, like with your kids and read to them. Not like something you'd read on Halloween time. It's just not the same thing. I think that's really, it's the aesthetic of it. It's the the whole point, you know, it's the feeling that you get when watching The Nightmare Before Christmas is definitely more of a, oh, this is like a nice, like heartwarming, like Christmas movie. Not like a, oh, this is a, a Halloween movie, you know. It's just two very different feelings. And I think The Nightmare Before Christmas invokes the Christmas feeling and makes you more hyped for Christmas than it does the Halloween feeling. See, I, I just... Uh, well, first of all, I think that depends on the individual, which is a hard argument to play because you know some you could somebody else could come along and say it hypes me up for Halloween the same way. I so, guess. Um, but okay, the only I, I would argue, and we also did kind of gloss over my other big point is that the whole point of it is about Christmas. Christmas drives the plot. Christmas in Christmas uh, inspires the characters, and it, it causes the conflict, and it causes everything that happened in the movie. If Christmas, if they never found out about Christmas, it would just be like watching them prepare for Halloween for an hour right. and 20 but minutes. But the you know? message is that, th- is that their Halloween, th- that they need to embrace their holiday, Halloween. Halloween is good for them. That Halloween isn't, t- well, because one of the reasons that Jack is like, oh, Christmas is because he finds this, like all this other, these other feelings that he hasn't felt like, Halloween is all about scaring people and the excitement of like being scared, the adrenaline mm-hmm. rush, this creepy stuff. And then he finally sees the, something that's total opposite and he loves it. But he needs, but the point of it is that all the stuff that he loved before isn't like bad or anything. Like it's not bad to be scared and stuff like no. that. He like embraces this, this yeah. like the stuff that he originally was meant for. Yeah. So that's, I think that's the plot, not necessarily that you know, he loves Christmas. I think the fact that he loves Christmas is, yeah, but is he wouldn't, would what he ever, motivates him in the end to embrace Halloween. But if he never stumbled upon that Christmas store, he would have just been depressed and sad his whole life because you have to see that there's other things. You have to have the option to know what you really like. You know, if he was just forced to do Halloween stuff his whole life and thought that's all there was to life, then he wouldn't have been as passionate about it because that's all he knew and it felt like he was forced to. Once he saw the other world of Christmas, it enabled him to see, to really realize his true potential. See, and I think that's the if I, important. If I think that if we had Jack right here with us today, the Pumpkin mm-hmm. King, um, <laughs> I think if we asked him, he would say, it's a Halloween movie. No, well, first of all, Jack's weird. He'd probably be like, oh, it's both. He'd like, you know, <laughs> get something really insightful or something yeah, silly. He's, he's deep, dude. He, he is. He he's so deep. Wisdom, man. I mean, have you heard his like lament or whatever? Like his song, like his yeah. ballad? It's, it's cool. It's great. First of all, also... He dropped some knowledge. He does. He dropped the mic. There was lots of mic drop moments <laughs> in that song. First of all, it needs to be made into a live-action musical, and I would watch mm. the heck out of that. How cool would that be, though, bro? I don't like know the about set, that. Like the giant spin, like twirly thing with the giant moon? But the costumes... They could make it work. I think it would, it would be... I think they would make it cheesy and bad. No, I think they'd make it super cool. I think it could. Be I think cool. they'd like have people on like stilts and like people with like f- like fire and stuff like all these cool things. Like, I think it'd be super cool. Uh, I don't know. I think one of the coolest parts about this movie is that it is claymation. That's true. It and, does have the nice aesthetic. And bringing that claymation to live action, not sure about that. Uh, I guess, but it'd still be cool. I would be worried. That okay, yeah, that's be... true. They'd pull a Spider-Man, the musical. Ooh, yeah. Where like three people died in the making of it, and it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This the, this movie isn't really that intense. However, an oogie boogie costume would be dude, so cool. Why am I not going to that for Halloween? That, that would be so difficult. So dope. Well, I think if they did it on Broadway, he'd probably be more of like a puppet or something, because like there's no way someone can get in that and move it around unless they right. altered the costume. But if they made it look just like it in the movie, which they could, and it would still be cool. I don't know. I think they could do it. Get like a fat suit. Um, Put that linen around, get a cool mask. <laughs> like also, a potato bag. Like Oogie Boogie is um, 
if I had a list of like my top ten favorite s- characters in the cinema world, like Oogie Boogie's up there. True. I love him as a as a character. Mm, he's so cool. He did not get enough screen time. He also has the best song in the 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 movie. The best song. Yeah, for sure. Freaking love, and that whole scene is cool. It is like the the, like the lighting, like especially the, watching it and then realizing that it's claymation. Like that still. actually is like a set somewhere. Like you yeah, can see that's that actually, physically. Oh man, dude, that's so cool. And then like they act. I, I gotta think that they actually used glow in the dark materials for that oh, scene. Oh, totally. They really did. So like, yeah, love it. Like they use black lights and glow in the dark stuff. Like that's can, so cool. We can find some common ground just agreeing that this is a yeah. great A movie. True, it is really fantastic. That's true. If you haven't seen it, I guess we didn't put that in the beginning. You should definitely go watch it yeah. um, after this episode, of course. <laughs> but because it's a really quality movie, and I also can agree that it is in the top ten. Whether it's a Christmas or Halloween movie, if it's a Halloween movie, it's easily in the top three Halloween movies. If it's a Christmas movie, easily top five. I'd have to write it down. I have to look through yeah, that a little bit see, more. But And also, just another good argument, I think, is to say, I would say that there are more good Christmas movies in the world. Yes. And less, I think, don't get me wrong, I think there's some good Halloween movies out there, but I think the the list of just quality Halloween movies is a lot lower than the list of quality Christmas movies. Yeah. So just for the sake of you know, balancing out the mm. lists, I think it should be a Halloween movie. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a risky territory to get into. The, the other thing, though, that is weird, like, if you think about it, like, Christmas movies, if a Christmas is a Christmas movie, you know it. There's, like, never debate about if a Christmas movie is a Christmas movie. Whoa, whoa, But the whoa. thing with Halloween movies... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? Die Hard. Okay, that's the only one, and no, that's that the is, stupidest debate. It's not even worth having. Wait, you think, wait, what do you th- wait, wait, we'll say at the same time what okay. we think. Have you seen, seen it? Yes, we okay. watched it last year. <laughs> okay, last year. Yeah. Okay, re- ready? Yep. Three, two, one. No, yeah. it's not. What? Dude, <laughs> yes, it is. No. <laughs> yes. It has nothing to do with Christmas. That's like saying a movie takes place on like President's Day. So okay. it's a President's tell Day me, movie. Did, tell me this. Do you think Home Alone is a Christmas movie? Yes. What about it is Christmas? The aesthetic, I told you. Oh, it's because it snows like, outside? <laughs> Yes. Dude, it snows and die hard. And, he, okay, yeah, but, okay, let me tell you. In Home Alone, there still plays Christmas songs, and they're going on the Christmas vacation and stuff. It's still, like, it's Dude, got a lot more Christmas in it. The li- No, no, for the first Home Alone, the only Christmas about it is that their family leaves for Christmas vacation to go to the beach, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Second dweebs. of all, nothing else in that whole movie involves Christmas at all. It's a classic Carter dunk. <laughs> die Hard, though. It's oh, all gosh. about Christmas. Okay? No, it's not. The, the, the only thing about Christmas is on Christmas Day. Yes, they're at a Christmas party and dude, some terrorists actually, show up. Home Alone doesn't even take place on Christmas. Okay, but let me tell you, dude. Die Hard, the only thing about Die Hard that's Christmassy is that he, it, they're at a Christmas party when the terrorists show up. Your point? <laughs> that's way more Christmas than freaking Home Alone. Bruh. Home Alone is a classic, and but it doesn't mean it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, they get back to him on Christmas, and like it ends with a nice Christmas scene, doesn't it? And so does Die, Die Hard starts with a nice Christmas scene. What's the matter if it starts or ends? <laughs> because it's like a conclusion. Well, uh, the conclusion of Die Hard is they killed a bunch of guys on on Christmas. That's awesome. And I do think he like walks away with his wife while it's snowing and Christmas movie music is playing. I think Christmas that's how, like, movie, the movie Christmas music definitely plays in Die Hard. Yeah. But if, if you're saying, if you claim that Home Alone is a Christmas movie, there's absolutely no way you can refute now. that. We're going to retitle this episode. <laughs> okay. It, this will be another episode. During, when we start back in December, uh-huh. speaking of which, there will be several, is this movie a Christmas movie? There will be sev- several uh, debates about that. But we're coming back December 2nd, I believe. <coughs> the first Monday of December. Yeah. And... um. We're gonna have some good episodes, so we gotta take Thanksgiving off because Thanksgiving sucks, so we can't milk that holiday to make episodes out of. <laughs> you're, you're we did exactly. that last year, actually. We did best Thanksgiving leftovers, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, but no. like that's that's all we got. Yeah, that's all you can get out of Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving sucks. But, but see, like Christmas, December, like there's so many Christmas episodes. We oh, do. so and so many Halloween episodes too. Yeah. So, um, thanks, thanks for tuning in to the very last episode of season three. Yes. Be sure to stay, you know, stay with us for yeah, the don't don't just leave for, for the November. November. Yeah, and the rest of uh, October. October. Yeah, um, we will be releasing content still, just not our usual Monday episodes. But it'll still be on it. We'll, we're still gonna be posting stuff on Instagram and Facebook, yep. and still on the YouTube, just not you know regular ups. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe a few specials or something like some that. Specials. Carter reading the Nightmare Before Christmas poem <laughs> by a nice fire <laughs> with Tim Burton himself. 
Oh, yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in. He's like John Cena, though. You won't be able to see him. <laughs> Me or Tim Burton? <laughs> yes, all of the above. <laughs> all three of you will be there, but you won't be able to see any of you. <laughs> to, uh, John Cena is our friend. He we, is. We have a picture with him. We do. <laughs> yeah. Go to our we got his number. Yes, and, he um, signed a business card. He has our number. Yes, he signed a business card. Yeah. And uh, I'm assuming the business card I gave him, he keeps his pocket at all times. Yeah. He probably keeps that with next to the picture of I us like to in a wallet-sized one, printed out in his wallet. I, yeah, with I like to card. assume that he's printed out multiples <laughs> mm-hmm. of the business card that I gave him. The picture we have with him, though, is kind of like a vampire. You can't see him. It just looks like we're posing with nobody. <laughs> right, that's very true. Um, anyway. <laughs> There's an interview with John Cena, and it's really funny. It's about how he has a superpower. And he's like, I have a super... He's like, my superpower is... I don't remember how he phrases it, but the way he says it is so mind-blowing. He's like, there will be hundreds of comments on this video saying, why is this just a blank screen all the time? And he's like, and that is my superpower. <laughs> 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 or something like that. And it's like so funny. I love John Cena. Uh, if he's you're nice watching, guy. you know, John, what do you think? Is this a Mr. Christmas Cena? movie? Or is this a <laughs> Mr. Cena? He totally We're thinks friends. it's a Christmas John. movie. We call him John. J, J man, J money. <laughs> JC. <laughs> JC. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram <laughs> at Scoble Podcast. Yes. Um, or you, you can, can check out our website, scoblepodcast.com. You can drop it the website, really. Yeah. Because you're supposed to drop it after I say. You can also find us on iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, well, that's the same thing. Uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, Google Podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> and our website <laughs> um, That's it. oh also we have some hot fire guests planned for season 4 true like some genuine like fire grade A like we'll spit fire on my, on the air quite li- that's a hint <laughs> yes <laughs> we um, should we should do a freestyle episode <laughs> yeah that's what we're going to be doing on our break preparing for that episode um, uh, so I guess we'll start here. yeah happy happy, happy holidays. holidays and Thanksgiving <laughs> Do 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 do